Guilty Movie Pleasure fans, prime meat, get your prime meat, because today on Guilty Movie Pleasures, we're covering Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, yee Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk, we talk movies. And now, here's Popcorn Talk's Guilty Movie Pleasure. Oh yeah, Dingle Scoot and Pooter Snatch, I had the hoot and scoot. That's a, that's a band that I made up in college, me and my buddy Craig Sorry. Shout out to Craig Sorry. What up, Craig Sorry? Dingle Scoot and Pooter Snatch. He's not sorry about that. At the Hoot and Scoot. This weekend only at the Hoot and Scoot from 10 p.m. to midnight. Only this weekend? You guys haven't gotten books <laughs> yeah. more He's than Dingle this He's Dingle Scoot, I'm Pooter Snatch. All right. <laughs> so I'm glad the you The more I say it, the worse it sounds. No, the better, I think. Holy shit. Okay. I'm going to preface this entire show with uh, mm. that I had never seen Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, and I had been recommended by several horror fa- uh, horror film fanatics that I that I trust. That you've currently now that blocked I, that from I've your now Facebook blocked on feed. Facebook. No, uh, so I didn't know what I was in for, and um, I'll just I. So if you do love this movie, know that I love at least 60% of this movie for how ridiculous it is. Mm. 70. I'll give it 70%. And then 30%, I fucking thought I was going to pull my hair out. But we'll get into that. This movie is definitely, in my opinion, the epitome of a guilty movie pleasure, where you watch this and you're just like, what the fuck is going on? I got Jesse McIntosh in the house Here I again. Am. What's hey, going sorry, on, I, went, I immediately. Jesse, say hi to everybody. Hi, hi everybody. It's me, Jesse. <laughs> it's Jesse. He's uh, back. I, I share similar opinions to Ben, but w- the math is slightly different. Yeah, that's all. What's your math? What's your what's your ra- what's your love to hate ratio on this? Uh, it's about ninety ten, and we're gonna find out which way <laughs> which way we're at with ninety, which way we're at with ten, in wait, just wait, a little wait. bit. I would like to say sorry before we get started. I just want to read the text messages I got from Jesse yes, McIntosh. Please. Where the first one we was... We usually, let me just also say, we usually um, are not in communication while we're watching the films. No. We like to do it separately, and we like to show up to set with fresh fresh minds, fresh perspectives. Um, yeah. So we, we can surprise each other. Um, so but this one, I couldn't contain myself. Your first one was, I'm an hour in, going to have to finish it after work, but I've already audibly said to myself a few times... What the actual fuck? Mm -hmm. By myself in my house, (laughs) just staring at my computer. (laughs) What the actual fuck? The same thing happened to me when I was watching it. Renee went to sleep and I put headphones on and I'm sitting there in my living room alone at like midnight on Monday night. Uh Just like, what? What the the shit? Yeah, yeah. Uh, And then you followed it up with, oh no, he just put the face on her. WTF. Oh, we'll get to what he just put the face on her He just put the face on her. So, uh, like I, I said, know. I'd never seen this movie. I actually hadn't seen the original Texas Chainsaw until a couple of years ago. You've never seen it. I've never seen it, no. Um, it, I understand where the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre and this even, if you had seen it at the time it came out, you'd be like, holy shit. Because watching this, I see where filmmakers like Rob Zombie steal from. Like, this feels like a very 80s lo-fi Devil's Rejects type of movie yeah, so, or House of a Thousand Corpses. So I tried to watch it through the through the glasses of like putting myself in the context of the time and like what It's still really what, difficult. It's still it's so tough. And like I tried to justify it like would I have been enjoying this if this was like the first horror film that I'd maybe seen or like that would I'd you followed just bail it on up? the genre? <laughs> yeah, I don't I, I really honestly don't know. Like there were a couple moments like when uh, when he comes out and we and we can get deep into this in a moment, but like when he comes out out and he wins the chili cook off or whatever. Hilarious. And he like goes into how much how keen of an eye he has for prime meat. Um, like obviously, and I'm not patting myself on the back for this. We've all been trained to be like, oh, that's the guy. Yeah. He's the guy. Yeah. He puts human meat. Um, but I just wondered, like, were people were people Sad hip to this yeah. well, when they yes, were watching it? You'd see, if you'd seen the first one, they eat. They they have okay. they have chairs made out of human skeletons. Yeah. They're clearly eating people. Can we can we play the prime? The uh, I'm sorry. It's the um, what what clip is it? It's the prime, prime meat, meat, prime meat, prime meat clip. This year, Drayton, you've got to tell the secret of that fabulously tasty chili. <laughs> no secret. It's the meat. Uh, Don't skimp on the meat. Uh, I I got a real good eye for prime meat. Mm. Runs in the family. (laughs) Whoop, whoop. It's one of those uh, hard shell peppercorns. (laughs) She she clearly, if you can pull out just the prime meat thing, Zach, for for later in the show, if not, no worries. When when she bites on something, she clearly pulls out a human tooth. Yeah. And he's like, whoop, 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 just a peppercorn. Uh... So this, the first movie um, at the time, 
was one of the most violent. That and Bonnie and Clyde were like the two most violent movies that had ever been seen. No, uh-huh. but nobody had done that kind of raw, gritty. And Toby Hooper has this kind of, in Texas Chainsaw One, this kind of very grind house, not even grind house, it's just this grimy filmmaking style that makes you feel like you're watching this happen to real people, not actors. Right, and so that's sort of what I expected because, yeah. um, and maybe it just like the, the reboots, um, the, just the previews that I've seen of the reboots, makes it feel a lot more gritty and like using a chainsaw to kill someone is a very intimate way to kill someone. In this movie, and, he and barely does this it. Movie, he, he just, he he just barely does it. does it. He waves it around and he's a clown. If you, so. if you want to play a great drinking game, play a drinking game every time Leatherface raises the chainsaw and does the truffle shuffle <laughs> and goes, <laughs> I think really <laughs> Leatherface just loves to dance. I think that's what we Leatherface, learned through. Leatherface just like he's just looking for a nice Texas radio girl named Stretch. Yeah. Which by the way, the radio DJ's name, who's the lead heroine in this, uh, mm-hmm. her name is Stretch. Stretch, and then uh, Lefty. Lefty, is, is, and then he calls her sister, right? Sister. Super weird. We'll get into all of that. Oh, oh we're jumping around. Boy, so oh boy. this movie, uh, it was marketed. It was supposed to be a very dark comedy because mm-hmm. what the, oh, I was watching the behind the scenes, and the first one was the shocking gritty horror film and uh the what did you say have the okay you have the prime meat okay i don't know why i stopped the show to read that <laughs> <laughs> i thought he was gonna tell me all right we're, we're gonna we'll get into that prime ben's meat. working on reading that's his <laughs> that's his goal of the week i'm working on it learn words. i got a real good eye for prime meat boom mm. you know, family actually uh i was at whole foods the other day yeah right? and, and um they're really snooty about their meat there, and I and I was just like, hey, is this is this beef grass fed? Is it is it you know, no hormones, anything like that? You know, you're not feeding cows to other cows or anything disgusting like that. Mm-hmm. And the guy from the behind the counter just looked at me and said, I, I got a real good eye for prime meat. Mm-hmm. Runs in the family. He was he was murdering a woman. Behind <laughs> <the place. laughs> She's just making sounds, and you're like, oh yeah, I just want that. Somebody, corn no, thing. it was it was a it was a woman eating candy corn next to me, but it was like stale Classic. from last year. So yeah. she's like, mm, this is really this is really tough gotta, candy corn. You gotta buy it when it's on sale in yeah. November. Um, I was uh, I was at <laughs> and then eat it by January. <laughs> eat it later. Um, I was at a screening um, for a new film. Um, I don't even remember what it was. That's how Doesn't bad matter. it was. It was Texas Chainsaw Three, probably. Um, and the, <laughs> all the actors like lined up, and it was it was a weird situation because like they were letting audience members come by and like shake hands mm-hmm. um, and just say hi. Uh, and at the end of the line, out of nowhere, walked President Obama. He just showed up. That's amazing. And he was he, probably doing Jimmy Kimmel. Probably, yeah. He was in town for for some entertainment reason, um, but. My friend went by, and they shook Obama's hand. And, I, like, in my head, I'm like, he just got to meet President Obama. And I pulled him aside, and I said to him, I, I got a real good eye for prime, prime meeting him. Brought to the family. Yep. You know, um, I don't want to get too political, because you just did, but uh, mm-hmm. they, they released more of the Donald Trump Billy Bush tape. They did not. They did. Oh, my God. They did. And he started to refer to women as livestock, started to Mm -hmm. refer to them as all kinds of disgusting things. But the tip of the iceberg was when Billy Bush chimed in and said, I I got a real good eye for prime meat. (laughs) Runs in the family. That was actually, uh, actually, he also said that in a snippet with an interview with Jennifer Lopez. So uh, oh, that yeah. wasn't behind closed doors. That no, was, that, that, was, was that was on air. That was they both. all knew. All right, let's move on. So let's get into what this movie, you're probably wondering, we've been talking about this for about 10 minutes now and you don't know what this movie is about. Well, we watched ni- uh, an hour and 40 minutes of it and I still don't know what it's really about. couldn't really tell you. It's it's basically five really long scenes. It really is, like <laughs> when you break it down. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. five super long scenes. We're going to try and do... The summary of this movie in three minutes. Are we ready in the booth, Zach? Yes. Let's do it. Three, two, one. So we open up with this super creepy voiceover that's like in 1973. There were all these kids that were killed and these chainsaw murders. They've been happening all over Texas, but the cops can't find any murderers. They don't know what's going on, but the, it's haunted they us. They can't ever find since. any facts. They can't that find was my any favorite. facts. No facts. Any facts. It's kind of like a, po- a political candidate. Yeah. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> so then we get introduced to this radio DJ named Stretch with these two kind of douchebag college guys that are just clearly looking to roofie girls. And just firing off guns. <laughs> Shooting just driving guns through the Texas countryside, firing off guns <laughs> into signs and like, like you do. Hey, we're looking for girls. We're looking for 
titties, yeah! And she's like, hang up, hang up, hang up. Apparently they don't know how to hang up phones Can't on the radio. Hang up phones. And then uh, Leatherface in this truck, but with this weird like puppet skeleton creature come by, and they start like doing this really long chase sequence, and then he saws the dude's head off, it crashes, and you're like, oh shit, this is gonna be an awesome movie. Then what happens? They get it all on tape. Uh, so the, the radio station has everything on tape. The uh, Dennis Hopper shows up, and he starts investigating, and we learn that he has a history with these people. He's been hunting these people for uh, 14 years. 14 years. Yeah. Um, the radio DJ Stretch shows up to his uh, hotel, I guess, and she's like, I want to help. I have these tapes. I don't know Listen how. to these tapes. How can I help? And he's like, get out of here. I'm get a lone wolf. Go back with all those partying guys in cowboy hats that yeah. are here for the college party, and they all are 35 years old. Yep, and then he immediately does a 180. He, <laughs> he, really goes, he goes and buys chainsaws. He shows up to her, to her radio station, I think, yeah? yeah. And he's like... Well, uh, bef- Oh, yeah, yeah. Go, and then go, go, before go. that, though, we're introduced to Drayton again, the father of the chance, yes. the Sawyers, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and he's with his chili, and he's like, and we already played that sound clip, where it's like, ah, oh, prime meat, and then he gets in the car, he hears it on the radio, and he's like, you fudge packers are gonna kill me, he calls his sons that, that's not my words, that's what he <laughs> says, yeah. and then he turns around, they're like, we gotta do something about it, so Dennis Hopper sh- uh, shows up, says, hey, let's do this, and then he leaves, and then she's there late at night, TG leaves her radio DJ host person, and what happens then? Uh, so then, the, she Here's a noise a down in the yeah yeah. So she goes to check it out, and the crazy brother, Leatherface's brother, I forget his uh, name. I forget his name too. But he's itching his Bill head. Bill Mosley's with, character. He's itching his head with a, 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 a coat hanger. A coat that hanger. Keeps yeah. lighting. Oh god, we have 54 seconds. Fire. Oh shit. Um, and so he like creeps her out for a while. Like she hangs out, and then Leatherface comes through the door, freaks her out. Uh, uh, there's a goes really after, long really sequence long. where he's holding the chainsaw up to her crotch, yep. and it gets real rapey. And, and then eventually he decides, oh, I'm not gonna kill her. Oh, 30 seconds. Here goes. He says he's not going to kill her. He goes back in. He says, yeah, I took care of her. They leave. No, they, they get LG. Oh, they kill LG. Yeah, yeah, they bash LG like 75 times. Yeah, yeah. Then the rest of the movie is literally Dennis Hopper shows up. They go to the... They, uh, she, they follow each other. He, he was using her as bait. They end up in the tunnels uh, where where the Sawyers they live. And they put LG's make their face on her. They take LG's face off. They, he helps her get free. They fight a bunch in the they tunnels. Dance. Dennis Hopper chops down a bunch of logs, and then the thing falls in. There's a grenade that blows up, and then and she kills the Bill Mosley's there's, character. There's a chainsaw fight. And she's leather, swinging leather around. Yeah, he, him and Leatherface chainsaw, and then she's swinging it. Ah! She throws and it off. It ends. Jesus. Okay, so if that last 30 seconds where we cover the, <sighs> the last two-thirds of the movie felt chaotic... <laughs> it's because nothing really happened. For 40 minutes. Um, we were just sort of, like, with them, and mm-hmm. they were all doing nothing. For, yeah, it's, it's... Let's get into this, because yeah. we have 30 minutes to really... First off, this movie, like I said, I love and hate this movie at the same time because it is, there's some hilarious shit in it. Like the beginning, I'm just like, why are these two college yuppies? And that's what I, re- re- I watched in the, in the behind the scenes. The first one, they're killing hippies. The second one, they're killing the more yuppies of the 80s. So it was kind of a commentary on the, the generation at that time. Mm-hmm. There's actually a couple deleted scenes where they just chainsaw the shit out of uh, this whole group of yuppies that are partying. And, like, limbs are flying. It's awesome. I'm like, this why is, wasn't that so in there? This is the set. We did this with Event Horizon, too. Why did they take these scenes out that, like, provided perfect context for yeah. what the film tonally should have been yes and the, whatever message they were trying to say super frustrating yeah so i mean that would have made a ton of sense to have a more chainsaws in the texas chainsaw yes. massacre um and b if they were making a commentary on the yep, yeah. youth of the day kill more youth kill more of those people have more youth in there except for one dj yeah <laughs> that's it so in the beginning though when it starts off there are these two guys driving around shooting mailboxes and signs with their little revolver and he has these stupid hologram glasses on and they call up the radio station and right away you know they're d-bags and they deserve to die because they they say what they're looking for can we play the bright lights big titties clip please he wants to hear bright lights big titties wrong i don't want to hear it i want to see it bright lights big Oh God! Yeah. Everything about those guys. <sighs> yeah. If if I had a friend who ever said that, I'm pretty sure they would get defriended immediately. Like that. That's. I mean, what if what if you're road tripping with him through Texas? And you can't. You, I mean, you you're stuck you, with him. You can't unfriend him then. No, you can't. Bright lights, big titties. Uh, you know, um, it's weird. They, I don't know if you knew this. There was. Uh, Back in the even the silent film era, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, when 
when Charlie Chaplin was doing City Lights, they were doing porn parodies of movies back then, even. And I know they didn't have sound, but the title card came up for one of them, and I would assume that the person would maybe sound like this when the porn parody of City Lights came up. But this is for Rick the Pimp. He wants to hear Bright Lights, Big Titties. Wrong. I don't want to hear it. I want to see it. Bright Lights, Big Titties. I wouldn't mind seeing the Charlie Chaplin porn parody, Bright Lights, Big Titties. Who who wouldn't want to see that? I mean, it's it's got to have at least some fun slapstick. I would enjoy it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Some yeah. Pratt falls some into sexual stick. positions. Yeah. Some slapstick. <laughs> oh. Oh, slapping the stick. Oh, oh my boy. God. Oh. I, was, I was volunteering um, with uh, a first grade class, and I was teaching them different, like, uh, like different senses, like how to describe different senses. Mm-hmm. So I was like, mm-hmm. taste. Um, I was like, feel. Um, and then because in first grade they don't know their senses not yet, yet. So at this particular school okay. they okay. Uh, they were behind a little okay. bit and okay. so that's why they needed volunteers because the teachers weren't getting it done Ben okay we need I'm to sorry. fund our public I'm schools I'm sorry you're right you're right I apologize watch the debate tonight folks um, I will be <laughs> but so I was I was teaching them the difference between the different senses and I was giving them examples as to how you would use each sense mm-hmm. in a sentence and the example that I gave was. Well, yeah, <laughs> something like yeah. that. Yeah. I, well, what I said was, I, w- I want to hear it, and then the first grader was like, "No, you want to see it. it." And I was like, "Well done, well, well done, first done. grader. Well done. Really. Wish well I done. could say the same for Zach. How <laughs> dare you? I'm kidding, Zach. You, you get, you know, you know, we pay for what we get here. That's why I'm late every week. <laughs> there you have it. I love you, you Zach. If you're not, if you're not careful, you're not careful. I got a real good eye for oh. prime. Yes! The brunch of the family. It might be lean on you, Begley. <laughs> I love it. You know I'm just kidding with you. So the uh, the sequence where... Okay, when so when Leatherface shows up on the bridge, they drive in this pickup truck, and instead of Leatherface just being Leatherface, which is creepy enough, yeah. he has a sheet over him with this weird skeleton puppet, which I assume is a real corpse or supposed to be. Yeah, and he—it's like bobbing around and dancing, and they're sawing through the truck, their car, on the world's longest bridge. Yeah, the two-lane bridge. Why didn't the guys ever slam on their brakes and turn That's around? That's what I was thinking or, the entire time. The entire time, time they're just like, oh shit. Whoa! I mean, Whoa! to be fair, it, this was like, oh. and and we talked about it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like the beginning of this movie sets it up to be a different movie than oh, it yeah. actually is. You think it's so, going to be an awesome slasher? So this is like... kind of cool. The way they're driving and Leatherface is Leatherhead or Leather, Leatherface? Leatherface. 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 Pinhead is, is yeah, from Hellraiser. Is. Um, but so they're driving in reverse and they're driving right next to, and neither one of them can really break away. Um, and then, like you said, the puppet. But the puppet comes back later. Doesn't the brother have like yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, a it's like a doll that he's? It's basically a corpse puppet they've made. Yeah, it's really weird. Yeah, so this is an ongoing theme. But they have it, and uh, the guy gets a shot off onto him, and he hits the the puppet. Yeah, and then Leatherface reveals because the puppet's bulletproof. I guess. Yeah, <laughs> it's a handy property of, in a puppet. Here's the thing: Leatherface has always scared me in concept. But in these movies, he's not that, especially this, he's he's a buffoon. Every time, he's really bad with a chainsaw in this movie. Yeah. Every time he goes to kill someone, he hits like a ceiling fan, he gets tangled up in some wires, he hits a wall, he's just swinging it around, well, there's no precision to it. We can it. talk generally about the wielding of weapons in this movie, because like across the board, shitty. <laughs> Like, no one knows no how one. to... No one. Dennis Hopper, nobody. The most proficient weapon user is the guy with the gun in the beginning. Who's yeah. just, like, crushing signs crushing left and right. Crushing some mailboxes. Yeah. We'll get to the, the final standoff. Uh, but, so, yeah. Yeah, the, I, like, like, when the guy's head gets sawed in half, it's mm-hmm. awesome. His buddy looks over, he's like... Ah, ah, and it's just going... Yeah. It's so good. And yeah. then it pops off, and it's spurting blood, and I'm like... Oh man, Here I am go. gonna love this movie. Buckle in, and then almost nothing happens from then on. Uh, but there is some hilarious shit. So, like we were saying, what is this weekend in Dallas that they're saying? Because the cops don't want 
this to get out because it's the biggest money maker weekend in Dallas. This is, and it's like a college party. Yeah, this is, but the, everybody looks thirty five with Tom Selleck mustaches. Yeah, well, there's some sort of other competition, I guess. It's going. Maybe they're alumni. Maybe that's what's going on. But it's the Texas Oklahoma football game, which oh, is, is that the biggest it's football to be? game in oh, the year. Okay. For I the didn't two even schools. catch that. I think. Because um, I think they said Texas Oklahoma rivalry a couple times, um, okay. and I would presume that that's what was going on. But it's not important to the plot; just important to like these people coming together. Yeah, and I guess they could have gotten together in any particular and, way. And it's important uh, as to why they're like, eh, let's not mention the chainsaw. But then, if that's their police work, it explains why for 14 years they've never caught. Yeah, the Sawyer family. Yeah, because they're just like, well, meh. Yeah, it's just an accident. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like chainsaw marks. Well, you never know. When cars crash, when you when you drive recklessly rocks on the highway, it's the railing could have cut it that way, yeah. and it just doesn't make any what, sense. Were they using their phone? That's illegal in the future. <laughs> and when, D, when <laughs> exactly when DJ when when sketch uh, stretch when stretch shows up. And the whole thing about her not being able to hang up is hilarious. It's like, it's so hang up, good. hang up, hang up, hang up. It's so good. Why you know won't what? they hang up? Don't take calls on the radio if you is can't hang true? up. Zach, do you know if that's true that back in like the 80s you couldn't hang up on callers? That seems crazy to me. I'm fine. I don't think that's right. It can't be. like there Because otherwise there'd be so many F... Because uh, you just disconnect, right? Like, cause it FCC wasn't... regulations, it would just be like... People could have called up and been like, fuck, fuck, shit, fuck, 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 fuck. And they'd be like, oh, this was a kid's program. Oh, no, we can't hang up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just some sort, of, of, some sort of fail safe. I, I think it calls. was just written in there for fun. When Stretch shows up to Dennis Hopper's hotel room, how did she find the hotel room first off? Secondly, uh, why is he so reluctant to to help her? This scene belonged, <laughs> if this were an actual movie. It doesn't make any sense. This scene belonged right, like, before the last act mm -hmm. for her to show up to want to help and him be like no I'm doing this on my own and then she would show up to help anyway and he would realize that he needed her help all along yeah. that's where this scene belongs but instead not in the beginning to have a very dramatic no I'm a lone wolf yeah. I run I run by myself I've been tracking these people down for 14 years it's so weird it's so <sighs> It's so strange, and the the other strange thing is the carpeting that go that goes nonstop from his hotel room into the hallway. <laughs> I love that you noticed that. Yeah, you noticed the weirdest yeah. shit in these movies. <laughs> the uh, so we get introduced to TG, who's just this good old boy, and everybody's kind of hitting on Stretch. I think it's LG, and the only LG, reason that's I, right, LG. Like I usually I'm bad with names, but LG. I was thinking to myself, life's good. Like the brand, life's good. That's right. Yeah, and I was like, yeah. was he was he maybe he started that M brand? Maybe he did. Yeah. So we already went into the prime meet where Drayton is winning he, Drayton this kind of hillbilly Drayton Sawyer the fa the patriarch of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre family the Sawyers he uh, he's won the chili cook off and all these yuppies in polo shirts and visors are just eating it and loving it mm -hmm. and then Drayton's driving off and uh, celebrating can we play the Sawyers are number one the song <laughs> the Sawyer song Sawyer song you see it up there? I see a mouse just click, click, clacking around. Sawyer, uh, Drayton sings, anything like that? Drayton did it again, <laughs> number one. Number one, the Sawyers are number one. <laughs> number one. <laughs> and, and, <did> <laughs> that right there, Drayton is my biggest problem with this movie. Sure. And here's why. Uh, he does not seem like an actor. He does not seem like a human being. Yeah. Uh, and Toby Hooper just allows him to ramble incessantly, especially the last 40 minutes. If this movie was an hour and 20 minutes, it would be perfect. Like, it, I could give, I could give it, like, I could go along for the ride and all the ridiculousness and all the silliness, but when the la it's a, it's an hour, and then they're in the tunnels for 40 minutes. Yeah. As he just, like, Talks and he starts getting in all this weird political shit. He doesn't give you any opportunity to cut. That's why his like <laughs> ramblings are. There are no periods in his sentences. They're just like they run into one another, and you're like, oh, well, like you uh, keep wanting to jump in and be like, okay, uh, that's okay. it. No, uh, 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 but okay. he just keeps going. Um, I do feel like him and the like brother with the metal head. Yeah. Maybe they thought they were in a different movie than the rest of the people that were in it. <laughs> I think so. Who, like, had sort of a vibe, and then the two of them were like, 
we're we're gonna go as batshit as humanly possible. We're not gonna See, but be Bill a character. Mosley, Bill Mosley, I believe more as that, especially his intro is super creepy when he first shows up. Which we'll play. Let's play that clip. The Bill. Well, well but let me set it up first. They, uh, so she's at the radio station alone. LG leaves. Mm -hmm. Um, and Bill Mosley shows up and he's wearing a Sonny Bono wig over this straggly hair. He looks like a walking zombie and yep. he has this, this, um, this coat hanger or like a clothing hanger that he keeps lighting and scratching something in his hair. Yeah, he's lighting it with it's his, with super, a match it's super, or with a lighter. It's super then, eerie. So yeah. can we play the Bill Mosley intro? Whoa. So this is Radio Land, huh? The infinite turtle, the, the waves through the ether fuzz roll on forever. Roar! Can't close that. I, I know what you're thinking. This is weird, huh? But I can handle it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. I think that was what I was thinking the entire movie. Is I know what you're thinking. This is weird. Hoping yeah. I can handle it. <laughs> that that should be the motto of this movie. I know what you're thinking. This is weird. Hoping I can handle it. Uh, it that scene though, because I hadn't gotten so deep into the movie where I was like, over some of the craziness. That scene was I thought was really creepy and fun. And he's itching, and you're like, what the? What is that? He keeps. Then he like picks something off and eat it. It was really creepy. It was it. So okay. It was really creepy because he's so, like, out there yeah. and he's so outlandish and, like, it seems like he might be capable of anything just because of that. There's a danger in that scene. Yeah, but also, like, he didn't seem like a real person to me. Um, and I don't know if that's in the script or if that's in performance or if that is just in the dichotomy of, like, him and Stretch being in... Stretch? Mm -hmm. Being in the same scene together and she's playing it really, like real and really uh grounded and he is definitely not she's the straight man of the whole movie she's she, but she, i think we she gotta... is but like definitely in that yeah. scene like there's a, a weird um i don't know there's just a difference in realities in the mm -hmm. two of them and like yeah it gives it a little bit of a creep factor but i just kept thinking like we did ace ventura a couple weeks ago like if jim carrey had done this role it his character's as outlandish as they are, just seem grounded in something a little bit more, and I just was wanting that out of these people. I, f I disagree with you there. I think Drayton isn't grounded and is just rambly and weird and, yes. and like, but I think f for the most part, Bill Mosley works for me, and mm. he's so bizarre and creepy. It's in, it's not until the end where Drayton and him just go on these like improv riff fests where I'm like, fuck. But this scene, especially when she's like, you gotta go, and then she says good night. And they're clearly spoofing. They even said this in the documentary, uh, um, the 13-minute documentary on this, I should say. <laughs> uh, they were saying how they were kind of parodying and, and sa doing a satire of John Hughes, like, relationship movies. To, like, oh, yeah. John Hughes movies, yeah. like, Leatherface and Her, it's like a romantic thing they're trying to make fun of. And when she's saying goodnight to Bill Mosley's character, I wish I could remember his damn name, but... Uh, can we play the good night clip? Because they go back and forth like two people who've just met and had a wonderful time. Good night. Oh, oh good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> he goes full Mrs. Doubtfire at the end. Yeah. Good night. Also, that scratching you hear was the coat hanger up against his yeah. metal head. And the only part of this entire movie that made me jump was right after that moment when they were talking in front of the record room, and then Leatherface comes bounding out with the chainsaw. That yeah. freaked me the hell out. Yeah. But then he just swirls it and hits like a hits the the, the ceiling fan, right. and then they, then they go into the upstairs room where there's the scene where he's holding the chainsaw. It's off. It's not on, but he's holding the chainsaw and he's like putting it, rubbing it up her leg, Wait, putting so, it to her crotch. Yeah, but before we get there, she runs up to the studio and closes this big like what is it like a cement door? Which is that's an homage to the first movie when Leatherface does that and takes the bodies downstairs. So they were giving a little nod to the first one when she slams that door, which oh, I, I cool. dug that. Okay, um, but she does that and then he spends pr five minutes of real time. I'm guessing like 20 minutes of fake movie time. Yeah. 
of just trying to saw through this door, and he makes zero progress. But he keeps trying. And then, because and then he just he, he's just Kool Aid Man through Damn it, the. That was my job. Yeah. Oh, did you did you? I wrote that down too. Yeah, he just like out of nowhere just bowls through the wooden she's, wall. She's sitting in there. She's literally sitting in the in the recording room, just going, "Go away, go away, leave me alone," as if that's gonna work. Yeah. And then yeah, he just busts in like, "Oh yeah," with the chainsaw yeah. going. I want him and the Kool-Aid man to fight in a meme somewhere. Oh, I think that would be great. amazing. But yeah, he doesn't, and it's, the funny thing is he doesn't even like saw through the wall. Apparently the structural integrity of this building is so bad that he could just bust through yeah. like the Kool-Aid man. I literally wrote that. Did I was, you, really? you fucking stole it. Nah, I did not. <laughs> it's the and only then, image there is, and let's And that's be exactly when he, he busts through and then he gets caught up in the fan blades and he's like, Ooh! and then he goes and, and um, like I said, he's rubbing her. He's yeah. like, He's like coming onto her with the chainsaw. And I just said, she just narrowly got chainsaw fucked. And her idea then is to follow Leatherface to his home? Was he? Yeah, okay, so. Because that's what happens. This happens. He says, oh yeah, I killed her because he's starting to fall for her. Right. And then him and Bill Mosley leave. And then her next idea is, well, I'm going to follow them at a not very safe distance to their creepy dungeon tunnel lair. Right. Which is good, because now the rest of the movie takes place in the tunnel lair. Right. So next 40 minutes. A couple of things. One, it looked as it, like, it turned out he might have just been priming his chainsaw, but it looked like when he had the chainsaw touching her private parts, mm -hmm. that he was masturbating. I, yeah, it looked like it. It looked like that. I'm pretty sure he was. Like, that's what he was doing, right? <laughs> yeah. I think he was jerking off. Okay. so It th looked like it. So, yeah. So, then she follows him. So, I'm... I think I checked out for like two seconds um, in between because I literally was like, how did she get here? Because they <laughs> she, never... She follows him and then... Do we see her following him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him? She's oh, okay. following him. And right. then Lefty turns out he's following too. Right. And so he used Stretch as bait. So Dennis Hopper's character used the DJ as bait. And then he shows up with his three chainsaws that he bought at this store, which, by the way, when he's sawing away at the at the wood in the store, yeah. the owner's like, whoo! <laughs> the owner the, might the owner, also be masturbating. I think the owner's in masturbating him, yeah. And it's clearly a stunt man. It doesn't look anything like Dennis Hopper when, in the wide shots when he's chopping away. It's amazing. He, he's also, I've never taken a chainsaw to a huge tree trunk before no. in that manner. But, but just chopping like an he axe. He looks like yeah. kind of slow motion doing it. Like, yeah. he's not putting his whole back into it. And I feel like... So, so then they should have worked harder. So then Dennis Hopper, aka Lefty, he's had 14 years to chase it to find these people yes. to avenge the murder of his brother, who was um, the character in the wheelchair in the first one. I can't remember his name, uh, but he it was his brother, and he's been trying to avenge this. And his big plan, uh, well, for, oh fuck! First, I forgot. Sorry, we're gonna go back to LG. Because LG walks in when mm. when Stretch is getting chainsaw fucked, and uh, he sees Bill Mosley. And can we play the what the shit clip, please? Is it up there? What the shit? What? What the, the shit? shit? Hey, lick my plate, you dumb dick! What the fuck you think you're doing here? You crazy looking little son of a bitch! Get out of here! <laughs> 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 can, can, that, that escalated quickly. Can, can, can we play that exchange one more time? What the shit? Hey, lick my plate, you dumb dick. What the fuck you think you're doing here, you crazy looking little son of a bitch? Get out of here! <laughs> then, then, uh, fuck, what is, Zach, help me out. Look up Bill Mosley's character's name in this movie because it's driving me crazy. He's one of the Sawyer boys. Then he just goes, uh, Chop, Chop's his name, uh, Chop, I think. He just takes a hammer and starts hitting him in the face. Yeah. It's at least 35 times. Yes. He's just hitting him and blood's pooling it with a fucking hammer. Yeah. And this will play out later in about three minutes when we explain why that's crazy. Chop so Top Sawyer. Chop Top, all right, Chop Top. So mm -hmm. Chop Top's hitting him, hitting him, hitting him. Anyways, now fast forward, we're back. Dennis Hopper's big plan after, uh... <laughs> After um, planning this out for 14 years, uh, can we play the Dennis Hopper prayer? I believe it's the chainsaw prayer. This is him out front. Oh, Lord. Help me beat this stranger that okay. walks beside me. All right. It takes away my strength. Lord, you show me the end. 
Show me what I fear, so I don't fear it no more. Okay. He's charging you like, what's he gonna do? Oh, he's gonna keep screaming. Okay. Wait, he pauses. He pauses to open the gate. <laughs> That's my favorite part. It's when he's screaming, pauses to open the gate, and then... It's like, you've had 14 years. You're not going to sneak up on these guys. There's, they're, you're clearly outnumbered. A lot of issues with this They've plans. murdered hundreds of people, and he's just like, fuck it, I'm guns blazing. And it's, it's not like he has guns and can shoot them. This is, so this it's is the other thing. It's close range combat. This is the other thing that I texted you. <laughs> I if I oh, had spent God. 14 years plotting my revenge, I would not worry about the poetry of using the instrument that was used against my family, no. especially if it's something so ineffective at <laughs> less than three feet. Yeah. You know, I would have maybe gotten a gun and been like, I'm just going to take these guys out. Yeah. I wouldn't worry about using a chainsaw on them. Um, it's especially crazy. if you have never, if you don't have experience, you're going into the most experienced chainsaw family's lair. And well, you're bringing a chainsaw? It's negligible. Well, if they're the most experienced. They are the most experienced. I got it. Like, it, it doesn't say good things about everyone else's experience, but they have clearly done the most chainsaw so, killing. So then his plan is just to start sawing down the support beams in this tunnel. He has no proof that they're in, this tu in these weird caves and tunnels. Mm -mm. He hasn't heard them. He hasn't found a location. He doesn't know if he can get out if he traps himself. And so we spend the next... 30 plus minutes, Dennis Hopper running around on his own, sawing down support beams while Stretch is stuck with Leatherface and he saw, he's slicing up LG. He slices part of his skin off, slices his face off. Yep. And this part, as gross as it was, I thought it was awesome because that's what you come to see. This was the one awesome. This, this yeah. part is so awesome. And you're watching it and that's when you said, oh no, he yeah. put the face <laughs> yeah. on her because he pulls the face off and he puts it on stretch, and then he gets her up and starts doing a cutesy little like middle They're school dance, dance with her, yeah. and it's horrifying. And that's what you want when you come to a Texas Chainsaw movie. You want creepy shit like that. Again, you see where in Devil's Rejects, Rob Zombie definitely lifted and borrowed that idea. Mm. Uh, and <clears throat> we do that in Funhouse Massacre, where Rocco's wearing a person's face, but it's a clown face the oh, whole time. It's a lot of a lot of homage. A lot of homages, you yeah. know, and. Um, but here's the thing that, that is the craziest to me, is that when Leatherface leaves, he, he hides Stretch, he leaves her in there, he ties her up so she can't get out, and then LG, who apparently is just the strongest man alive, or, or has, like, is Superman, because he gets up, has no skin right here, yeah. his rib cage is exposed, his stomach muscles, no face! Yeah. And he basically, the only purpose, him coming back to life after 75 hits to the brain and his skin being shaved off, is to cut her loose and then die immediately. Yep, yep. That's it. Well, he did it. It was a success. <laughs> but as he sits up, he says to her, don't be scared, in the scariest way possible. Can we play the don't be scared, darling clip? Darling, don't be scared, darling. Oh, <laughs> is that it? Is that all that happened? Can we play that one more time? Darling. Don't be scared, darling. It's not very convincing. Every, oh, God. Everything about that clip is frightening to, to so many degrees. Yeah. He's saying it as he's like, like blood just oozing off of his face. Literally, he just serves the purpose to free her and then immediately die. Yeah. Yeah. It's so weird. Um. <laughs> oh, oh, what's that? Oh, boy. What's happening? Darling. Don't be scared, darling. Very scared, Zach. And don't call me darling. Zach only refers to Ben as darling. So then we find out that there's... So then Stretch. Stretch is trying to sneak around, and her only way apparently out is to shimmy right by the, all the Sawyer family. Yeah. And Papa Sawyer, Drayton, sees her. And can we play the booger clip? Some kind of crazy booger just gets through here. Oh, no. Booger? How big? Big crazy booger. <laughs> there's no, there's no way that was scripted. There's no way it, a studio goes. Yep, 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 yep. That's what he should say right there. I'm, I'm speechless. Big crazy yeah. booger. I don't, I don't really know. Like I, I've done that before with my nephew. Yeah. When you? I'm trying to clean out his nose and I'm, and I'm trying to talk in like little kid talk. I'm like, come on, let me get that booger. And he's like, no, no. I'm like, come on, big crazy 
booger. Yeah. I don't even want to play the whole sound clip again. <laughs> I just did it for you. Sorry. It's so, so then they bring Grandpa back, who was in the first movie. Mm-hmm. Grandpa's like 134 years old or something. Seemingly, he has a strict liquid diet. He looks uh, <laughs> terrifying. And this scene goes on forever. This dinner table scene where she's tied up. They con- they clonk her over the head. She's tied up and screaming. It's an homage to the first movie where the girl is sitting there tied up screaming, and they show like 700 close-ups of human bones in the room. If you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> and the scene goes on forever. And then Dennis Hopper jumps down with his three chainsaws. <laughs> he, again, no sneak attack, no sneak up rev. By the way, chainsaws are the epitome of not stealth weapons. Yeah. Also, I think it would have been really funny if his chainsaws had run out of gas while he was. <laughs> By the time he. Yeah, just... <laughs> while, while he was cutting down all the all the pillars, <laughs> in the. He, he in just, the cavern. That he, he jumps. Just did you like how he, ju- he jumps through? down like a superhero? It's like this yeah. epic shot. And then he looks to the Sawyer family and he says, "You shouldn't have been doing this, boys. Can you play the uh, you shouldn't do this, boys' clip?" Boys, you never should have been doing this. Now, this brings up some dark stuff for me. Sure. Um, Because my family was very prude. They weren't really, there's no sex talk, nothing like that. Mm. And I bought some Playboys. And let's just say I was caught mid-act with those Playboys. And my dad just looked at me and he said, Boys... You never should have been doing this. Needless to say, that gave me a complex. Yeah, yeah. Well, for the uh, rest of my life, uh, while we were waiting, for I just you hear to... that voice every yeah. time now. <laughs> you never should have been. Doing... Oh, sorry. you're so right. I'm you're sorry. so right. You I'm just priming the chainsaw. I'm yeah. just priming the chainsaw. <laughs> um, while while we were waiting for you to get here today, um, <laughs> we, like usual, I, I told Zach, I was like, "So, Texas Chainsaw Massacre two, uh, we're we're doing it." And he just, like, gave me a look and shook his head, and he goes, Boys, you never should have been doing this. <laughs> that was, the, yeah. over, that was yeah. the overall theme for this show. You might be right. But sometimes the movies that are the most infuriating to watch are the most <laughs> fun to talk about. Yeah, that's true. Like I said, before people, because I'm sure there's diehard fans of this, I really enjoyed about 60, now that I'm thinking about it, it's more like 60. And then, because my... Oh, the first hour I thought was pretty hilarious and ridiculous shit was going on. My problem is when they're stuck in a tunnel for 40 minutes mm-hmm. and it's just Dennis Hopper chainsawing pl- uh, beams and then the most hilariously non-epic chainsaw fight between him and Leatherface yeah. as they basically just do what I did in like my uh, college <laughs> stage fighting class where it's like, ha, 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 and just back and forth. But then Pa Drayton... Sawyer, he gets chainsawed through the table to into the ass. His ass gets chainsawed, mm-hmm. and he's a little upset about it at first, but then he finds a silver lining, as any Sawyer does. Can we play the Took Care of My Hems clip, please? Small businessman always, always, always gets it in the ass. Ah, sure. Sure took care of my hams. <laughs> Saved a trip to the hospital. <laughs> oh, th- wh- that clip right there sums up everything you're getting yourself into with this movie. Yeah, tell me what he just said. Wh- I have no idea. He said, a small businessman, because the last 40 minutes of the movie also is just Drayton off camera yelling about how corporations, nobody has to pay taxes. It's really weird. Like, uh-huh. it's really out of place. And how, like, his whole business is of serving people people. And his, <laughs> his whole Soylent Green Chili yeah. thing going on yeah. is really just, just getting screwed over by the corporate America. And small businessman always gets... And he's, it's such an overt metaphor that he gets chainsawed in the asshole. And then he says, small businessman gets it in the ass. And then he pauses, smiles, and goes, sure took care of my hems, though. Saves me a trip to the hospital. Yeah, that chainsaw took care of your hemorrhoids, but it probably caused a lot more damage. I would than think so. You're gonna definitely need a a donut to sit on for the rest of your life. So, maybe an ice pack right away. <laughs> so maybe then, just something like that would do you good. And then, and then he uh, he's just like, well, I guess I gotta end this all. He grabs one of the corpses from the table that happens to have a grenade mm-hmm. on its body. Yep. On its per- dead person. Yep. Don't know why. Because it's convenient. Pulls the pin, 
Leatherface, this is one of my other favorite moments. Dennis Hopper takes his big chainsaw, shoves it through Leatherface's stomach, through his backside. Mm. It's all the way through Leatherface's. He's just chainsawing away. And <laughs> Dennis Hopper yells, ah! similar to what he yelled on his entrance, right as Drayton drops the grenade. Blow, seemingly blows everybody up I in the room so, yeah. because Chop Top and Stretch are he, he, she's chasing up a mountain up a mountain I guess uh, up what looks like a, a giant mini golf uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sat, like creation uh -huh. so they're apparently dead off camera yeah. never come back to Lefty but before that he calls Stretch sister which is really confusing strange but I heard in the original script they realized that they were related somehow, and they cut all of that out. Again, again, something that would have been let's necessary. Let's keep the important let's parts keep in, just in the future. Let's keep character relationships in movies, please. Yeah. Uh, let's not uh, Batman v Superman theatrical cut it, all right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, because the ultimate cut is awesome if you haven't seen it. I mean, it's good. It's not awesome, but it's good. Anyways, that was off track. But so their Stretch is being chased up this giant thing. She's kicking uh, Chop Top. She gets up to the top. Uh, there's a chainsaw, a chainsaw like a Deus Ex Machina moment where there's this chainsaw sitting on Grandma, mm -hmm. who dies in, the, who's the dead corpse in the first movie that now is sitting up there. She grabs it from her, and Chop Top freaks out and is like, "You killed Grandma! This family's fucked more than you can imagine." Because they think that this corpse is... Okay, we're starting to wrap it up. I know. So then... Uh, so then, <laughs> then the, he, she's trying to rev the chainsaw as he's... You, you were saying earlier, he's super ineffective with his knife. Yeah. He's just he's slashing her, but nothing really deep. Nothing's going on. Well, he first, just to prove how crazy he is, he it's slices her, his throat neck. over and over and over again. And then when she's on the ground trying to get the chainsaw going, you're right. He's just slashing her back with this knife instead of stabbing her yeah, with the knife, like, yeah, which would have been a little more effective. Yeah, yeah. So he's just like whimsical with it. Just like, ooh, this is fun. Like a painter yeah. painting his he's, masterpiece. What's that painter from the 80s with the pretty fluffy clouds, fluffy clouds? Oh, boy. I, Shit. Bob exactly. Ross. Uh, Bob Ross. Yeah, yeah Bob, there it is. He Bob Rosses her back with yeah. a knife. Yeah, yeah. And then she turns around, saws him up the stomach. It splits open, and he goes falling down this tunnel. Which there's a deleted scene where the tunnel then blows up for no reason and his clothing comes flying out. That makes sense. Is that the grenade? The grenade blowing up? Maybe, maybe it blew up again. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> there's but, another corpse holding a grenade that went off when the first grenade went off. <laughs> and then the last shot of this movie is Stretch holding the chainsaw up on this mini golf mountain, swirling it around kind of sexy where she's like, ah, can we play the scream, uh, the final scream and I'll do the chainsaw for you? Final scream clip, Zach. That's pretty much what happens. That's what it is. And then it just... Then it just ends! Holy shit. We gotta wrap up. We gotta wrap up. We're gonna leave you on that. I, I do have some lingering questions that I want all of you to think about. Please. Um, the cavern that they live in, how is that financed? Who knows? That was like a cost, like an emptied out Costco. That's how big it was. It was amazing. With, yeah, and apparently they lived under there, and just on the <sighs> just on the funds of Chile, I guess. Hey, small businessman. I guess so. We got to wrap up now. We got a new, another it. show coming in the studio, Let's but uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you are a diehard fan of this movie, again, I laughed my ass off for sixty percent of it, and forty percent of it I wanted to pull my hair out. But I did enjoy it. I do see the appeal to this. I think it's definitely a guilty movie pleasure. Jesse, where can they find you? You can find me at Too Much Jesse on Twitter. Uh, you can find me promlosers.com coming soon. Uh, I will be at Flappers in Burbank this Friday, 7.30 p.m. at the YooHoo Room and 86 Charles Podcast. All right, I'm at the Ben Begley. At Guilty Movie Guys is our Twitter page here. And also, Funhouse Massacre, I mentioned this, it's now on Showtime and Showtime Anytime and Showtime On Demand. So if you have Showtime, it's free. Go check it out. It's also at Redbox. Tell me what you think of it. At Funhouse Mass is the Twitter handle. Tweet me if you see it. I'll send you a signed poster to the first person who tweets me a photo of them watching it on Showtime. And uh, until next time... What is your guilty movie pleasure? Ah! Ah! From producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, Christian Harloff, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of its owners or principals.